Hello, everyone. Um, so today I'm very excited to talk to you about our recent work, Glaze, where we try to protect human artists against generative AI models. This is a joint work with my co-authors, Jenna, Emily, and Rana, as well as my advisors, Heather and Ben. So before I start, I want to say that uh, this work would not be possible without the support of our artist collaborators. I'll mention about them throughout this talk. So this project really has been dominating my life for the last 10 months. I want to share why this is so important to me and where it all came from. I'll do this by following the story of an artist, Kelly McKernan. So Kelly has always been passionate about art. These are some of her very early paintings. Over time, Kelly started to develop her own unique style, getting featured in galleries, become semi-professional. Kelly continued to evolve her style, and today she is a full-time professional artist. Right? That means she makes most of her income through creating and selling her artwork. So to be successful at this, Kelly needs to constantly or maintain a very active online social profile, right? Constantly post her art on Instagram and her websites. And the reason for this is these sample art will attract opportunities for her, like commissions, gigs, also sell, help her to sell her arts online. So Kelly, through this, was able to make a decent living for her and her family. Until last year, Kelly discovered that over 50 of her paintings is scraped into a data set called Lion. So Lion is this data set that is used to train most, if not all, of the text to image generation models. Right? Now the problem is Kelly never gave consent right, to the collection of her copyright artwork as well as training generative model using them. And the result of this is not only these models learn to generate pretty pictures with the help of Kelly's art, but these models also learn to mimic Kelly's unique artistic style, right, generating these synthetic images in the same style as how Kelly would paint them. These are some more examples of this. Synthetic art mimicking Kelly's style. So Kelly's story is far from unique, right? These type of style mimicry, as we call it, has happened to tons of artists around the world. And in fact, style mimicry has become its own industry, right? Today, there are entire online marketplaces just for style mimicry, right? So this is how they work. So AI enthusiasts, they will target specific artists by training a style mimicry model on the art of the artist and then post these models online with the purpose of replacing the original human artist. And the ironic part of this is that they're also trying to make money out of it by asking for donations on these platforms. So as you can imagine, style mimicry has a huge impact on artists, not only their income, but also their livelihood. Right? From the artists we talk to, many have stopped promoting their own artwork online, getting replaced by these models, feel so depressed about AI, many has considered quitting art as a career. So these are some results from a user study we did early this year with over 1,000 professional artists. But this is not just in our study. Right? We see this all over the internet, on Twitter, on News Highline. I want to bring your attention to this middle one here. So this one was very recent, was last month. It's about a Japanese art student who was so depressed about AI's impact, so he attempted self-harm. Now for the rest of today, I'm going to talk to you about Glaze, uh, our effort to try to protect artists against this type of style mimicry. And I'm going to do this talk a little bit differently from a traditional conference talk. I'm going to talk less about the technical details, which you can find in paper. I'm also happy to answer questions about. But instead, I'm going to focus more on the interesting bits that are not in the paper, our experience of deploying Glaze to artists and some lessons learned throughout this process. So let me tell you how this project actually started. So this project actually started with artists reaching out to us asking for help right, through some prior work we did with Fox. So from there, we attended this online town hall where hundreds of professional artists got together to talk about how AI impacted their life and how they should react to it. So from very early on here, we decided that if we were to build a protection tool in this space, we have to work with artists, right? Because we cannot decide for them what is, perf what is the best protection method, what type of parameter makes sense to them. So we started interviewing artists individually, conduct user study, and use these inputs to build Glaze protection. So news on this got out early uh, March, and we're interviewed at several places, and we released the beta version of the tool at the end of March. So now it's a bit over four months later, Glaze got around one million downloads around the world. All right, so what is Glaze? At a very high level, when there's no protection, anybody can go to artist's website, take a couple images, train a style mimicry model. And again, these models will be able to generate synthetic images in the same way as how these artists would paint, right, for arbitrary content. 
Now with Glaze, artists will first run their artwork through Glaze before post them online. And Glaze will add some small changes to the art that is barely visible to human eye, but will be sufficient to confuse these generation models by poisoning their training process. So that means if an average hero were to run the exact same mimicry attack on the Glaze artwork, what happens is this model will learn the wrong artistic style associated with this art. So it will generate images in a different art style so that the original art style is protected. I'm sure some more example of this. So these are original art pieces from three different artists. These are mimicked art pieces if artist does not use any protection. And these are mimicked art pieces if artists use glaze to protect their art. Right, in the paper also show that glaze is effective in many different challenging scenarios as well as against many countermeasures. So once we built Glaze, it came with a question of what do we do with this, right? If we were to release this tool to artists, there are significant risks involved, right? For example, Glaze has limitations, so it could be misunderstood by some, it could be bypassed in the future. But we look at the situation, especially the conversation we had with artists and really the suffering they're going through in real life, right? we know we'll have to at least do something to help them, right? Despite all these risks. So we worked with artists uh, before the release to really minimize this risk as much as possible. Right? For example, we communicate the limitation repeatedly to the artist community, as well as try to pre-build defenses in the tool itself against potential countermeasures. So this is what the tool looks like. So artists can download this on our website for free. And there are a couple of knobs you can see on the left where artists can change to trade off protection cost. So release went very successfully. So the original tweet from Ben went viral we also got around one million app download in just like less than four months. All right, so this number really shows how many people are impacted by generative AI around the world and how many people are seeking protections actively. Some the immediate impact after this was we started getting a lot of emails from artists sharing their unique perspective, unique struggle with AI systems. Right now we're working with a team of artists around the world who help us better distribute Glaze, right, from designing the app UI to include Glaze as this part of online campaign against the misuse of AI. Beyond individual, individual artists, we'll have gaming companies and entertainment companies also very interested in develop their own version of Glaze internally so that they can protect their own assets, their own IP. So generative AI is also not just a problem for artists. Right? We see very similar impact on musicians and writers and voice actors and many, many other creators. So we're very excited to see there are already follow-up work in this space from other research groups, so likely hear more about this in the very near future. So once, before release Glaze, uh, we're also expecting very strong adversarial response right, from AI companies and enthusiasts. So the whole team were just on pins and needles for the first several weeks of release. So we did see quite a few real-world attack on Glaze, and I will summarize some of the interesting ones here. So the painting you see here is the Musa Victoria painting by Carla Ortiz. So Carla is a well-known artist. She was very passionate about glaze. So she painted this oil painting from scratch to kind of be the first image ever glazed. So back in March, when we released glaze, we posted the glazed version of this art online. And within the hour, there was a ML practitioner uh, tried to circuit and try to bypass the glaze protection on this piece of art. And he tried something called PEZ reverse engineering, which is a stronger type of mimicry attack just, just came out during the time. So this is a result that he produced. So it's not really working very well at mimicking the original style. Right? But he still documented everything and posted these online. So additionally, later on, we see several reports from US, from China, from Japan talking about glaze might be broken. Right? So all of these are referring to this GitHub repo. The author of this repo designed a technique uh, very similar to pixel smoothing, try to smooth out the pixel changes added on this type of art. So in our separate test, this attack does not work really well. But I think in general, we know that pixel smoothing or image augmentation doesn't work well against uh, average or perturbation added by a tool like Glaze. So later on, the author even admit himself that this attack does not work as well as he thought it would. So, so far we have been very lucky, right? These attacks are not successful and Glaze is still effective, but we're committed to bring continued update to Glaze to make it more robust even in the future. Now, so our discussion today on kind of the struggle between human artists and generative AI is only one portion of a bigger picture, right? We see this ongoing fight between generative AI and human creativity at large. 
Right? For example, the entire Hollywood's on strike right now for a month already, and a centerpiece of the disagreement is about the use of generative AI. Right? How studios can use this model to replace human creator, where oftentimes is where the training data of these models came from. We also see several senior here on this. So this is a very broad, broad space. Right? There's many different stakeholders, many different parties. So the interesting thing is Glaze brought us a unique opportunity to engage with these stakeholders. And we think it's very important for them to hear from us from the perspective of security researchers. All right, so for example, we are speaking to different artist unions and creator guilds. We're engaged with Eclair, as an activist group that behind many of the recent AI regulations in the EU. Back in the US, we're talking to the US Copyright Office as well as many other legislators. So this is a very complex issue, right? It is a copyright issue, it is a legal issue, it is also a labor issue. This will really be kind of the question that defines the future of human creativity from here. But coming back on this, this is also a security and privacy issue, right? There are a lot of people getting hurt, getting attacked by a new piece of technology. So I think it would be great for people in this room to take a look at this problem if interested and contribute your expertise to this very important space. All right, with this, I would like to end the talk here and leave you with a variety of images per by Glaze. Have you taken any questions?